All right, welcome to uh, Shop Talks, which is a production of the Ink Kitchen and brought to you by Impressions, Magazine Impressions, who put this show on, and sponsor Haynes, want to thank them. Have Pam Gami from Doing Good Merch, and, and Brett Bowden from Printed Threads. We do not have Jacob Edwards from Jack Prince and Any Merch. He uh, had a illness in his family and could not make it. We were originally supposed to have uh, Kevin Sukahara from uh, Amazon as well, but he uh, corporate policy dictated he could not attend. Uh, but anyway, we know a lot about fulfillment here. I do as well. And um, if you wanted to see Jacob and you want to leave, you can get up and go. But um, we'll be talking a little bit about some uh, about online f stores and fulfillment, and then we'll have questions. We could. We could like call them. You could like ask questions, we could call them. And then. Actually, I've heard Yeah, we could actually just tell you what they would say. Yeah. All right, so um, let's start a little bit about like what kind of stores you're running and what kind of fulfillment operations. Start with me. Um, hi, my name is Pam. I work for Mirror Image, which is a print shop in uh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And I run sort of a, a division of that shop called Doing Good Merch. And we run uh, retail stores for nonprofits and progressive organizations. And it, that's sort of the main bulk of Doing Good Merch. Uh, but also, for Mirror Image, we also run stores for um, like a company employee uniform store for a dispensary that operates in multiple states. And then, what else do I do? Um, fulfillment for other customers. Yeah, we, so we have fulfillment for the retail stores, and then we also have fulfillment for the customers, our regular screen printing customers, who once the pandemic hit, instead of you know us delivering six boxes of shirts to them, they now wanted those six boxes of shirts sent out piece by piece to individual uh, recipients. Which happened increasingly during COVID. So like a company would buy shirts for everyone in the company and we would send one out to every address of those people at home. And uh, Brett, what's your bag, dude? Hey, so uh, my name's, first of all, my name is Brett. And uh, yeah, Printed Threads is a shop in Fort Worth, Texas. And we, uh, we have a fulfillment part of our operation that uh, houses uh, products for rock bands and some uh, several different other types of charitable organizations and some clothing lines and that kind of the products kind of range from uh, t-shirts and hats to uh, random weird things like hammocks and <laughs> uh, keychains and vinyl records and mugs and you know glassware which is really fun to ship so do do you do like production on demand just in time uh inventory how do you do it why do you do it yeah, so we do not do anything that would be on demand. Everything that we do for our fulfillment would be uh, products that we print in production and then move over to our fulfillment um, operation. We kind of act like they're two completely separate businesses. So uh, in fact, they are on two completely separate sides of our building. So. Um, if you're a fulfillment customer, you, we, you buy, you put in a screen printing order, those products are printed in the, uh, on, in the production side of the building and they're moved over it's just like they were, I mean, it's just like they were shipped anywhere, but they're moved from product. I feel like someone's talking to me. Is that you, dad? Uh, they, they're moved over to uh, fulfillment from production from there. Or we, um, but basically, yeah, we don't do anything on demand. So everything is paid for, um, and it's usually, you know, bulk 
items. So people are ordering hundreds of products at a time, and then we are putting them on shelves from there. All right, what do you do? What do I do? Um, we do a mix of uh, on-demand or just-in-time DTG prints, as well as we screen print items that sell well, that we know sell well. Um, we also do, beyond garments, we will do mugs, and sometimes we have stickers, uh, pens and pencils, things like that, which we, don't, we keep in stock and send out when they are part of an order. Basically, if it's real expensive to inventory, we don't do it. If we have to produce it, the customer has to pay. But we're unlike you, where your um, uh, customers are paying for everything, we're usually doing stores for people where they don't have to invest. So we, we charge them more, but we in particular have a lot of nonprofits, and they have a different angle on it, right? Yes. Um, the nonprofits, I mean, the, the whole concept with doing good merch was nonprofits don't know anything about merch. They don't know about apparel, they don't know garment decoration, they don't know fulfillment. Uh, so, what we do is we handle that for these organizations. It lets them concentrate on the mission of the organization, and also they have uh, theoretically outreach to the people who support those organizations. and. We hope and expect that they will do the marketing portion of the, the store. Actually, it's kind of ironic. So we started by doing the nonprofits, and then um, it turns out lots of people don't know how to do <laughs> anything to do with business, and they just want to let you deal with it. So we have a store for a 60s rock band, Moby Grape. They had never done any merchandise. People were bootlegging their stuff. That was it. So we just handled the whole thing and send them money. And that's not a bad model. Um, and people that appreciate what you do for them, you can charge them a lot of money actually for it. And so to get into a little more about the difference between on demand and just in time, um, sort of we have, uh, and keeping inventory. So we kind of, on popular items as they develop, we might start printing them on demand DTG and then see we're doing so many, then screen print them, which is different than the old model where you screen print a whole bunch of stuff and find out it doesn't sell and then figure out how to get rid of it. So it's uh, more ecological, it's more um, cost effective, um, but then just on demand is so demanding that it's hard to do, and so it's at least better, and I know Jacob Edwards, who has a much larger enterprise, was doing uh, fanatics, et cetera, to keep a small amount of inventory that you produce with digital equipment is much more efficient than um, just producing each item. And well, then the other thing not to forget is besides digital, transfers are another good way to do things that get uh, on demand. Yeah, for, for that, for, you know, people want different placements. If you're going to do a front and a back on a DTG, that adds a lot of cost in your printing cost. But if somebody's doing like a small left chest, you could do that as a transfer. He pressed that on, full print on the back, and that way you can keep the cost down of that. Um, another thing we do is we kind of standardize, we try to standardize blanks across stores. So we generally offer black and heather gray shirts and not a lot of other colors so that we're not, uh, with a few exceptions, we're not like out searching for where are the purple shirts for this one shirt, for this one order. I mean, if you have um, a good relationship um, with Sanmar, Alpha, or um, SNS, you can get in a position where you get even individual garments sent to you at no cost. Uh, no, PS no shipping cost. No shipping cost. <laughs> so, but it doesn't mean it's a good, just because it's a free shipping doesn't mean it's you a good You heard it here, Sanmar will send you free shirts. <laughs> anyway, the logistics though of that are not that great. So you better be charging a lot of money if you're going to, for each item, get in, I mean, I could offer uh, this shirt on every color that Samar offers, but it's not necessarily a good idea to have to figure that out, order it, and in particularly this environment, find out that there's no inventory. So ideally, you keep at least some inventory at your facility, and that is difficult to manage. Um, 
You know what? I'm going straight to questions here. Yeah? You got other things to say about saving money for fulfillment or stores? How about for, uh, let's get in a little software of stores. What, what helps manage stores and fulfillment? What, what do you use over there doing good merch? Uh, for managing fulfillment, we use ShipStation, uh, which is not super expensive and is very good if you are uh, aggregating lots of different stores into one system. When I set this up a couple of years ago, I was looking around and a lot of the fulfillment apps I was looking at were omni-channel, which, you know, you have one store and you're selling on Etsy and eBay and Amazon and it would pull everything in. And I was really looking for something where like, you know, I have 15 Shopify stores and I want to see everything in one screen. And ShipStation allowed me to do that, uh, which has made things much more manageable on the fulfillment end. For other software recommendations, other softwares, uh, I like Microsoft. Uh, no, um, we've we've actually like taken a d deep dive into all kinds of software platforms. In fact, uh, we we were just using one called Ship Hero for a while, which is, I think I think we were paying like twenty five hundred bucks a month for it, um, and um, as we were migrating off to several different other. Uh, uh, platforms, but the um, we have decided that we j just really do like Shopify a lot, um, plugged into ShipStation, and, and, and it's What's just your, getting. There's another alternative to ShipStation. What's that? Pirate. There's a lot. There's Shippo. There's Pirate Ship. Something like, like that. Yeah. Ship it, Pirate. It, both. Um, both. You know, Shop. They've put so much effort into those those two softwares, and there's really a lot you can unpack and unlock if you spend the time and really dive into it. The problem is, like, none of us as like shop owners have just an infinite amount of time to really dive into all these, and so hiring somebody to really spend the time to to dedicate into figuring it out, and you know, inventory management in general is is a problem. Um, Making sure you're spending the time to manage your inventory, it's worth a lot of money. And uh, managing where your inventory is, being able to access it quickly, being able to pull in, uh, orders fast. There's management software like SKU Vault out there that'll allow you to go manage or manage inventory. Make sure your your bin locations are in good places, and be able to you know get into your warehouse, go directly to one place, pull that piece, and uh, you know, as you as you scale, you, <laughs> when you're a small operation, you know where to go to grab that one red large shirt. But as you scale, and you have more and more people, and you have to communicate with more and more people, and you're in a hiring situation where you're trying to have to, or you're having to hire anyone off the street, you need to be able to communicate really clearly with every person, and um, you need to be able to say like. Uh, uh, communicate in a language that everybody understands, right? Which might be uh, an, in numbers, right? So aisle one, um, aisle one, uh, bin five, uh, location seven, or whatever. And being able to have a software that can say all that stuff and barcode and do all that becomes really important. For a s simple software that, um, for like if you want to do s fulfillment for um, schools or uh, your attention. This is a reminder. Please visit the Shop Talk booth, booth 346. Oh. Their session will conclude in 10 minutes. Thank you, God. Also, please visit live demonstrations in the Innovation Zone in booth 677. What do you think he means by conclude? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. It's like Squid Game. It's like a boulder just falls on us. I'm going to get out of the way. So um, if you do fulfillment for businesses or schools, um, a, a good simple software is Order My Gear, which doesn't cost to have a big investment. They, I think basically so that you won't waste their time, they charge you something which is not that much, and then they take 4%. 
and they probably get a good credit card rate and you don't. So it really doesn't cost you that much. So that's a good low cost thing for fulfillment. And then for um, complicated fulfillment where you have all kinds of deals and whatever is the, that one you were just looking at. You want to talk about oh, that one? Oh, Bright Stores. Yeah. Um, so a lot of companies want to send out the uniforms or whatever to their employees. Um, I mentioned the dispensary we work with. They have, I don't know, a few dozen locations in two or three different states. Um, and what I'm trying to get them to onboard is the Bright Stores Advanced Company Store, which has all kinds of back-end adjustments you can make. So, for example, I could make sure the people in cultivation only order the uniforms that people in cultivation were, you know, or the security people, nobody can just go on there and order the security gear, things like that. You can also set departmental budgets. There's a lot of stuff on the back end that you can adjust that would really dial it in. For example, in Pennsylvania, they cannot wear shirts that say cannabis. And the companies, can I say their motto? I don't care. Their motto is cannabis for real life except they can't say cannabis in Pennsylvania. So if somebody works in Pennsylvania, they have to order the version of the shirt that says flower for real life. Um, and people screw up and people order the wrong shirts right now because there's not a, a sort of a, a check on that. With that advanced company store, Bright Stores, you would be able to show people, if people are logging in from the, you know, the facilities in Pennsylvania, they would only see the merchandise that they're supposed to be able to order. So the other thing is that a lot of companies that want um, uniforms, et cetera, will give like a coupon or a certain amount of money or whatever to like new hires. They want, especially during COVID, they want it sent directly to them. So it really becomes difficult to manage this. You know, you don't want to do that by email. You want to have some kind of online situation. I won't call it exactly a Redemption store. Codes. Yeah, so that people can order what they want and on the back end you'll know how to produce it and send it out properly and that is like a really key element of all of this I would say another th about cost controlling I would say another thing we, we spoke about earlier was that returns in online stores get really expensive with all of the back and forth shipping that happens uh, one of the best ways to prevent the returns is size charts you know, have size charts on all your items. On Shopify, I like the best best fit size chart, something like that. It's a an app. Um, Which it, isn't expensive, right? No, it's not very expensive. It's like 10 bucks a month or something. It has those, you know, the same that you'll see in other big online retailers, the, the sizing guides. It looks the same as it shows up on, on the screen. And that has really really prevented a lot of problems. Nothing will take away your profits more than discussing anything with anyone that orders something that you're going to send them. So you want to prevent all interactions with customers if you can help it. It also saves me from writing, oh, I'm so sorry the sizing didn't work out for you. You know, and then having to the send it back here and once we get it, we'll send it back to you, that kind of thing. Which, you know, is not... Like during the holiday season, that's not really how you want to run a store. If somebody's ordering from your store on December 10th and you know they want to give it as a Christmas present, you know, you, you maybe don't want to take the time for them to spend the 350 to mail back and you're, you're kind of going on, on good faith, which doesn't always work out. At least if you can point them to a size chart to begin with, you're going to avoid that whole situation. I actually have a random tip for fulfillment, which is have a bonus that kicks in January 15th. <laughs> that uh, because you do not want to lose your best people and, and you can lose them when it gets really hectic uh, pre-holiday or during the holiday season. So one of the better things I think we instituted was a bonus that you get after you stick it out through the holiday season. Because if you lose a good person, then you are screwed because you're already having a hard time keeping up. What is it, like 60% of orders are all during... Uh, it's 40. The, Depends on the retailer. A, a, but very high, 40. very, very high amount of volume is right before the holidays. Um, Brett, I have a question. 
What do you look for when you're hiring for somebody to do fulfillment? What do I look for when hiring someone for fulfillment? Um, hmm. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> Do yeah, you, uh, she will show up on time. Are you a are you a boring person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like interacting with people too much? That's not a good person. Actually, antisocial people <laughs> seem like really good for fulfillment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. What? The Liberty Graphics. What was that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we visited a place recently, had a pretty big fulfillment operation, and the guy, like, basically doesn't want to talk to anyone. He comes in at three in the morning to avoid everything, but everything was, like, perfect. Yeah. Inventory's perfect. Everything's perfect. He didn't want to talk to anyone. He has a little booth, actually, that he stays in that keeps him away from everyone. So maybe antisocial is a good thing to look for. Yeah, I think uh, one thing about our fulfillment part of our uh, business is it is the cleanest, it is the most organized um, it is, you know, that is, that is so important. It's got to be like, everything's got to be in the perfect spot. Um, it, it's got, it takes that per, that type A kind of like uh, OCD, those types of people are definitely the best. Yeah, not me. <laughs> um, do you have any questions about fulfillment or online stores? Anything? Barring that, any questions about life or philosophy? No, any, uh, most of you have stores already thinking about it? What, where are you at? Who, who, who is thinking about it doesn't have any online stores or do fulfillment? I mean, one thing I'll say, we do contract work and we do um, uh, directed customers. And my contract, uh, big ASI companies, the ones that have millions and millions of dollars, they all have company stores and do fulfillment. That tells you a lot. It's a good idea. And you know what, increasingly, people want the whole thing in one place. You know, just that of you shipping it to somebody that does fulfillment has such a cost, that's enough for a profit for you. Anybody else have any questions about fulfillment or um, online stores? All right. Favorite animal. There's free beer at four o'clock. How's that for an announcement? All right, well, thanks for coming, and we'll be around if you want to, if any of you are too shy to ask publicly and want to ask us anything about fulfillment. I apologize again for Jacob not being able to be here. I um, want to thank Haynes and Impressions again, and um, thank Brett and Pam. Thanks.